Have you ever seen an octopus ink? Well, it's actually a defense mechanism that all cephalopods use to kind of get away from predators or things that are trying to hurt them. Octopus ink is more black, but it can vary to a bluish red. Squid ink is actually a blue black and cuttlefish ink is actually a brown or produces something called the sepia color in writing. And that's why actually most cuttlefish, besides a couple of species, are called sepia. And the common thing between all three of these animals and their ink is actually a protein called melanin, which makes the ink really, really dark. Now to me, one of the weirdest uses for cuttlefish ink is actually cooking. Have you ever had pasta El Nero? Well, it gets its dark color actually from cuttlefish ink. Now you might ask why cuttlefish ink and not squid ink? Squid ink is actually a lot stronger and it has a very accurate taste versus the cuttlefish ink, which is more subtle and mellow and will actually also give it that same color. This was said by Marcella Hazan, who wrote a cookbook called The Essentials of Classic Italian Cooking in 1992. To the Italian palate, the harsh, pungent ink is the least desirable part of the squid. As Venetian cooks have shown, it's only the mellow, velvety, warm tasting ink of cuttlefish, seppi, that is suitable for pasta sauce, risotto, and other black dishes. Now I've tasted cuttlefish ink and it's not like she described it at all. Yeah, I was not expecting this. It does not taste good whatsoever. And it's actually healthy. It contains essential amino acids, proteins, minerals, and it actually contains something called glutamate, which is actually very healthy for brain activity. And now they do use cuttlefish ink derived directly from the sac that the cuttlefish has. So it's not contaminated with any other animal mucus parts. And the best part is that cuttlefish ink has no toxic component and it is absolutely safe for human consumption. Today, we actually use cuttlefish ink for cooking and I think just cooking. But in the past, they actually used it for writing and they used to put it in pens and actually those feather quills that they used to write with. Now the earliest ink sacs actually appear in the fossil record around something called the Carboniferous period, which is actually about 330 million years ago, almost older than dinosaurs. And they actually found two fossils in England that they dated back to 160 million years ago. And those fossils contain the ink sacs of cuttlefish and they did an analysis on those ink sacs and they actually found the exact same pigment, melanin, that can be traced back to modern day cuttlefish. And now the first ever to document or describe any type of cephalopod behavior was actually Aristotle and this was in the 4th century BC. So cephalopods have been a focus for a really, really long time. And it's not just a fad because of the movie, My Octopus Teacher. They've always fascinated us and they've always known that these animals have something special in them. Now let's play a little game. Something in my background has changed. And let's see if you could figure it out before the next scene. Now I'm paraphrasing some really old wise person and they said of the mollusks, the sepia, which is the cuttlefish, is the most cunning of all the species. And they are the only ones that actually employ their dark liquid for concealment as well as fear. And then some 400 years later, another famous historian actually theorized that because cephalopods had this dark liquid or ink, that this replaced their blood. So he actually thought black liquid or ink ran through their vessels and not blood. Now, Charles Darwin from the Voyage of the Beagle in 1839 actually said, I was much interested on several occasions by watching the habits of an octopus or cuttlefish. Although common in the pools of water left by the retiring tide, these animals were not easily caught. They darted tail first with the rapidity of an arrow from one side of the pool to the other at the same instant 
discoloring the water with a dark chestnut brown ink. Now everybody knows that octopus is ink and you've actually seen it on my channel multiple times. The baby octopus Shelton actually inked a couple of times. I've had birdie ink and I've actually had the new cuttlefish that I bought. I actually bought two and one of them inked so much in the bag that it suffocated before I was able to get it out. So it's very common knowledge that these creatures actually ink and the ink that they produce is this thick mucus, as if it's like snot, and you could actually use a container or something to actually scoop it up and put it in a bottle, which is really cool. Now, a German painter in the 1750s named Sadelman actually developed a technique to extract this ink from cephalopods, and it was actually the most ecological of all the techniques used today. And what he realized is that if a freely behaving cephalopod, cuttlefish, octopus, inks in seawater, he was able to collect the ink and the seawater and extract the ink from the seawater. Now this works really well for painting, but it's not fit for human consumption because while he's extracting it, he's also extracting a lot of toxins and unwanted things in the seawater. So this technique is no longer used today. Now the second technique they used actually involved a syringe and they used this syringe to actually extract the ink from freshly killed animals. Now this again is not done today, but this was also another technique and it's actually called the syringe technique of Madeiras. The fourth technique also needs a dead animal. And what they do is they actually squeeze the ink right out of the sack. And now another technique that they have that also requires a dead animal, they actually blend in the ink sack with the ink in it, homogenizing the whole mixture. But now it includes all these other different parts like mucus and the actual ink sack parts, which is very, very undesirable if you want to cook with it. Common day, they collect this ink from freshly dead cephalopods. And that is by far the most common way that they collect this ink for human consumption or human use, which is really horrible in my opinion. This is 100% to avoid contamination of mucus and other body parts into the ink, making it unfit for human consumption. Now, another very fun fact that I thought was absolutely outrageous was that in India, during COVID-19, they actually used cuttlefish ink as a disinfectant against COVID. And it was actually branded and it was called Sepia 200. And Sepia, again, comes from the Greek word meaning cuttlefish. You have always asked me if you can actually write with octopus ink. Today, we're gonna find out. I actually tried to find out how many cuttlefishes contributed to this much ink and I got no clear answer. So we have a fountain pen, something very close to a stamp. It's not a stamp, it's one of those crock gibbets and a calligraphy brush. And we're gonna put them all to the test and see if we can actually write with this stuff. There are two types of ink out there. There's alcohol-based ink and water-based ink. So what we're gonna do is mix it with some water, mix it with some alcohol, and actually try it straight out of the jar and see which one writes the best. I was expecting it to be more of like a paste, like a tomato paste, but it actually looks like a blob of ink. Um, I don't know if it's gonna write just like that, but we're about to find out. Yeah, the ink seems to be too thick and it's not traveling to the tip of the pen, but it looks like it would write. Yeah, no. All right, so I'm gonna mix it with some water. Just a drop. Maybe I should add a little bit more water. It's still kind of clumping up. All right, so this is another way they actually make ink. It's water-based ink. And this one looks a little bit looser, so I'm hopeful that this will actually work. 
still not getting to the tip of the pen. It only worked because I took a big blob, but once it dries off the tip of the pen, that's it. It stops writing. So let's see how it does with alcohol. Eh. All right, so this pen is obviously a bust. It's not writing with either of them. So I'm gonna try the calligraphy brush. Yay! Yeah, writes a little bit better. There's absolutely something about cephalopods and their ink that is special and that most societies have recognized that and have incorporated it into some form of their daily lives, whether that's cooking, writing, COVID-19, but it's definitely widely used all over the world.